Hey everyone, this is Daniel, and in this video we're going to see how we can use the patch function to save your items to a SharePoint list, um, especially when you are trying to build a custom Power App from scratch. Um, so here's the demo that I've already built, but uh, before we dive into that, I'm going to actually show you the SharePoint list that I've created. Um, so I'm using my SharePoint online over here, um, and as you can see, I've already got the uh, list built over here, and I've already got some items. Uh, but let's take a closer look at the list. So I go to list settings, um, and in the back end, you'll see the type of columns that I've selected. Um, I have a few single line of uh, text over here. I have a multiple line of text, um, definitely some choice text over here, um, choice type columns. Um, and I want to take a look at that as well. Um, this choice type column, uh, I call it the single or double bed. Um, that is the radio buttons that I have. Um, so that's one. The other one that I have is um, for this one over here, and that's a drop down menu. Um, what I also have is um, date and time, and that's pretty straightforward. <clears throat> and uh, the, the two other key ones that I want to look at is the lookup. Um, so I have one lookup for city, and I have one lookup for state. Um, the city actually comes from this list that I have, it's in the same site collection and the same site. And uh, the state comes from, again, this list, which is in the same site collection and the same uh, site over here. So when we go back to the columns, I look at city, you can confirm that it is a lookup. It's coming from the same list I just showed. Um, and that's the column that I'm going to pull. And the same thing for the state. Again, it's coming from that uh, list, and then that's the column that I'm pulling. A um, couple of tidbits over here. Uh, when you're building a list, um, try to make the naming convention a little bit easier to handle. Um, recommendations I give is when you're building a list, start with the list name as um, lower letter case with no spaces in between. So as you can see over here in my example, I just have um, the name I gave it as patch it it's all lowercase one word and then after you create that once it actually gets uh, created with that you are in the URL as well then you can go ahead and rename it and change it to whatever else you want um, I did the same thing for my column names as well um, for example the single or double bed over here um, when I click on it and actually go and look at the URL um, initially it was just a lowercase one word which is single double bed and then after that, I went ahead and changed the column name uh, to whatever else you want. And that actually is going to help you to um, make all these custom uh, forms, especially in the patch function that we are going to use. Um, so we already taken a look at the list over here. Um, now let's go ahead and look at the uh, app itself. So what I have over here in my Power App um, is basically a scenario where you can do a hotel reservation um, and that's where these three items come from um, and the hotel reservation app all encompasses in one screen and then in that screen I have um, a few different things going on so I've got created uh, groups there's a, a view group and the view group basically has all the controls <clears throat> for uh, um, basically you can view the items it shows you in this group everything that I can see uh, if I'm just there for viewing purposes and I've created another one called add group and those are the uh, columns <clears throat> I use to um, add actually the entries uh, I also have created galleries and uh, that galleries is to run for to get the city you know for the lookup that I've done and uh, the other one is also for the state uh, to do the lookup, um, I've also had to get the data sources for the state and the city, the one I just showed you, and then obviously for the patch, it, which is the list we're going to store the, um, the data over here. <clears throat> Another thing I wanted to talk about was uh, to focus on the lookup, um, I will be giving you the actual commands uh, that you want to use, or the formulas for the patch, uh, but another good resource for that um, was uh, Laura and kudos to her for finding out how to do this. Um, she actually has mentioned it in her recent video, um, but she also has this article where she talks about how to use the lookup field, and she goes through some steps, basically how you can go ahead and 
uh, put in the formula uh, and I'll be providing this link in your um, in this uh, blog as well um, <clears throat> so um, let's go ahead and do a test so I'm going to now uh, in my power app um, I'll go ahead and put in a new entry actually first as you can see I've gone ahead and made it such that based on what I select I can pick up everything that I'm looking at um, over here so let me now go ahead and add an entry um, in the entry uh, I can change that to say Daniel Christian one two three Main Street and over here I've actually added some buttons um, even though they are buttons but when I click on it um, I get the um, um, the second list which is the lookup list and over here I go ahead and pick in the um, the state that I want so I'll pick in North Carolina uh, for the city I'm gonna pick the city that I would I live in and I'm gonna say Charlotte <clears throat> that's it over here zip I can put in my zip and then smoking do I am I smoking non-smoking I'll do non-smoking is it going to be a single or double bed it'll be single bed amount I'm going to pay in cash is zero now my arrival date by default it picks today's date over here so if I go ahead and say it's going to be a future of our arrival for um, Thursday and if I select November 2nd watch that the departure will automatically be the day after so now I've done November 2nd click on OK see and that changes to November uh, 3rd so I'll leave that as it is um, in the notes I'll put in um, I'd like to check in at 12 noon all right and so now I'm done over here you can see those ellipses are moving so um, that's where it is going over there my entry is made and as you see over here I've put in the first name last name the arrival day the single bed uh, let's also go ahead and take a look at the list itself when I refresh it you can see that the entry has come in that's the new one I put in key key things to see is is my lookup working so yep I see that it is a URL so when I click on even when I click on it you will see that the lookup list actually opens up over here so we've got the lookups working and now um, can confirm that the um, drop downs I mean the choice type columns work both the drop down and the radio button um, and then the arrival date and the amount in cash so everything works really well uh, and so that's basically the demo I have uh, for how it works the next thing that I want to focus on is um, the actual patch command itself so the patch command was in the uh, when I'm adding an item so but let me go ahead and click on it here when I click on it you can see that things which were in the view went, went ahead and got hidden and then things which I'm going to use to add went ahead and became visible over here um, and let me pause here for a second and tell you that I'll be providing this power app along with the STP files for both the patch where the list will be saved also the STP files for the lookup and I've got a little explanation in the blog of how you want to add which list first um, that way the lookups work Plus, I'll be providing the Power App itself in the blog, so you can actually download it, attach it to your um, your SharePoint online lists over there, um, and do this for testing. This is all free, and you can use that for your uh, testing purposes. Um, so as we c continue, uh, in the check over here, or complete, this is the main uh, patch statement over here. Um, this set view that's basically just so that I can go ahead and view the items uh, but starting from the update context all the way down to the patch uh, that's where um, uh, you know the main function of the patch happens uh, key key things over here are for the con um, lookup columns such as the city and the state and the state uh, here that's where we have to go you know in order to save it to a lookup type column what I need to do is make this O data type connection and for the O data type connection to work I need to actually ref refer it to the other SharePoint list and I can do that using using the Azure connectors um, in addition when I'm the list that I'm referring to I have to provide 
the ID name and I have to get the value, that's how I'm able to make a correct reference to that lookup list uh, using an OData type connection and I can save that to my lookup type column. So that's why you see this little, um, this uh, extended statement over here for both the city and the state. Uh, similarly, in for the drop down type columns or the choice type columns, um, which was smoking over here, uh, also for the singular double bed, um, it is kind of similar, but you don't have to get the uh, the whole ID and the value. All you need to get is the value, um, but you're getting the value again from the SharePoint list because it's a predefined value. Um, therefore, you can't put in anything else. You have to get those predefined choice type um, values over there. And so again, for the doing the same thing, I get the O data connection made to um, using Azure connect connectors to refer to that SharePoint list. I'm doing the exact same thing over here and here. Um, the text type columns, which is the first name, last name, notes, those are all simple text type columns. Um, so that's why those are fairly easy, right? So I put in the last name, uh, which I'm saving it to the last name, and then I, uh, whatever was the control that I put in and named it, um, I just put in the text over here. Um, the other difference that I wanted to show was for the numerical values, which were two uh, numerical type of columns. Um, zip was one of them for putting in your zip code, and the other one was for the amount in cash. Um, they behave similar to a text type column, but you have to wrap that in into the value function because ultimately what you're getting is a text but you want to save it to a numerical column and therefore you want to use this value function so what you do again is get the text wrap that into the value function in order to save that to a numerical column um, so this entire information has been explained step by step in the blog um, I still wanted to go ahead and uh, give that example to you uh, once again, I will be providing the Power App. I'll be providing the STP files. So you can actually recreate this um, into your in your environment because there's a lot else going on over here. Um, you know the way these pop-ups come up and all of that, and you can go ahead and you know play around with it uh, and see how these formulas all work. Uh, but hopefully, this uh, walkthrough of how the lookups work and basically how you can actually take a combination of um, different column types. Um, and, and actually build your own uh, customized Power App and save it to that SharePoint list using the patch function. Um, finally, in the end, there's two things that I have skipped, and that is by design. Um, as you can see, that I did not use any metadata type of column. Um, I also did not use a choice type in multiple selections. Um, those two are currently not supported. Uh, and I can show you over here when you go to the uh, SharePoint, uh, connect to SharePoint from Power Apps, um, whose link or URL I provided, there is a section called Known Issues. In the choice, right now, the only support is single values. Therefore, I did not use the multiple value selection over here. Also, even you go to metadata, it is currently only read only, so you cannot write back to that. However, if you are in need of doing any managed metadata type of um, adding an entry to the SharePoint list, um, you are, uh, I, I highly recommend taking a look at Paul Kumsey's uh, Power Apps Flow and Manage Metadata Fields. It's a four part series and he's really done a deep dive on how to use that. Um, so you can definitely refer to it. Uh, its link is also what I provided. Um, and I've also provided um, uh, Laura Rogers uh, link where she actually did talk about this lookup field as well. Um, so you're welcome to look at that. So hopefully this demo and this um, uh, Power App will actually show you that you do have the functionality now to go ahead and use the patch command um, to save multiple or different types of columns in your back-end SharePoint list. Thanks.